Welcome all to today's video. We've got a Mercedes A Class W176 and we'll be doing the rear brake pads. So, just start off with these are the tools that you'll need. Of course, you'll need a lift, two axle stands to support the rear jack and points, some chop stands to stop the car rolling forward, lock and wheel nut, wheel wrench, toolkit, a torque wrench, and of course, your parts. So from AutoDoc here, I've got my retainers and I've got some new screws as well. And we've got some Brembo brake pads from Euro Car Parts. So I'm unsure in diameter of these, but um, it has got a part code on here that you can use. There you go. So starting off with using your wheel wrench, obviously you want to loosen your rear bolts. So we'll get onto that. Yeah, use the 17 millimeter wheel wrench. After loosening our lug nuts, what you want to do is just quickly start the car. You want to ensure the parking brake is released. And then we want to turn the car off to the first day ignition. And now holding the OK and the phone button simultaneously for about three to five seconds, we should be able to access our hidden menu there we go so now using our scroll options here we want to go down to pad replacement okay and to move to fit in position press okay again and you might not be able to hear it but right now i can just hear the rear caliper winding back and now i can go and lift the car off so now i've got both sides of the rear on jack stands so I've gone underneath the car and just below the rear subframe I've used a plank of wood to support our jack stand and lift the car up on both sides. I'll be able to show you a better um, view of how I've done this just afterwards. So over here we've got exhaust and there'll be a lot of plastic underneath the car, a lot on the trailer, on the carriage. But um, across that beam I've lifted the car and as you see on both rear jack points I've got axle stands and as the car's parking brake is also off as a fail safe I've placed chop stands on both front wheels. Okay, with the fitting of this um, electric brake, it's a bit difficult to fit a ratchet in. So, using a 13 and a 17 millimeter spanner, um, there's a 17 on this carrier and a 13 bolt guiding through. You just want to proceed to crack these open. So, here I'm on the driver's side and I'm going to be spinning anti clockwise. And that will allow me to loosen this bolt. So now we'll have to do the underside up here. So we'll be the exact same positioning down here and the 17 there, 30 on the rear. Crack that one loose. So what I'm going to do is just do some W40 and um, concentrate this bolt. So put my 17 there, put my lift, and crack the bolt, and that's it. Okay, so as you see, following on from the last clip, um, I have three our caliper assembly away from the brake pads. And looking at our retainer and pads, is quite seized in. So by hand, it might be quite difficult to pry these out, but with a screwdriver or a little pry bar, you can just wedge it just behind and pry them out. So you've taken out these retainer clips. It's not always a good idea to reuse them, but uh, whilst taking these out, remember they are very sharp, so wear a pair of gloves. Uh, just literally pop them out. 
completely goes aside, we'll be replacing those both top and bottom. And if you have a wire brush, just also give it a good scrub and remove all that debris. This side obviously we're getting the right orientation. Right, so as, as I said before, these are very sharp. So make sure you do wear gloves, otherwise you could seriously injure yourself. So making sure this fits the profile of the notches here. Now, using our top of grease, we're just going to line the slides in which the brake pads will sit. So you don't need an excessive amount, just the smallest dab in between the retainer. And we're just going to do the same for the rear and for the top also. So do just as a fail safe these little notches that will be sliding up and down for our brake pad. We can also line them with a little bit of copper grease. Just send them around. So, so as you can see I fitted the front and rear brake pad, just want to squeeze them in, make sure to together. Now we have to fit our caliper over this. And um, if your caliper does not fit over, you'll need a piston rewind tool to push this piston back. But um, if you use it off Mercedes system, it's already pushed back for us, so we can easily just slide this on. So now I'm going to fit our rear caliper on, make sure our bolts line up, so you might have to push back on these guide pins just to line our bolts up. So if you want to ensure the pads are moving freely, then now using our new guide bolts. So you want to pop two of them out and just hand tighten them in. So quite nice from Bember actually. These got a 30mm spanner head and they also got I believe a Torx 30 that's what it looks like. So yeah we're just gonna pop these in. Uh, as I said, no need to apply thread lock, there's already thread lock inside. So just guide these in with your hand. And then you finally get to tighten them up to spec. And that's done. Two bolts are tight and we want to see a slight bit of movement between the calipers. That's because our piston is not reset. As that piston resets, it will compress the pads onto the brake pad. So you should be able to spin it freely and that should be able to move. So now we're going to progress to the opposite side. Last final step, this is where the torque wrench will come in handy. So it needs to be on 120 newton meters with a 17 millimeter socket. Go ahead and tighten all these bolts. Okay. 